Splash has just released a new military color series, so in today's video, I'm going to be going over the paint itself, my thoughts on the paints, and also show you guys what the paint looks like on a kit. I'm excited, I hope you guys are too, so without further ado, let's get it. Before we get started, I want to be clear on my relationship with Splash Paints. While I am a partner builder with Midwest Hobby and Craft, I purchased these paints with my own money, so my views are not going to be influenced in any way. With that out of the way, let's go ahead and take a look at the paints themselves. Splash Paints come pre-thinned in a 30 milliliter bottle with a mixer ball already included. Midwest Hobby and Craft sells these bottles at $5 each, making it come out to about 17 cents per milliliter of ready-to-use paint. The only item in this con list is that these bottles don't come with any sort of pore spout or nozzle. This means you're going to have to pick up some pipettes to transfer your paint or pour your bottles directly into the cup, which can be a little risky. Now, this isn't really a big issue, but something you should know when you decide to buy these paints. You guys can get a large pack of pipettes from Amazon. I'll go ahead and leave an affiliate link in the description, as well as the pinned comment so you guys can support the channel and get what you need. On to painting. I picked up seven colors that I'll be looking at today, and I sprayed them over three different spoons. The first one is going to be a bare plastic spoon simulating a white primer. The next is going to be over a Nazca light gray primer, and finally a black primer to give you guys an idea of how it looks over the different primers and how much the primers affect the final color of the paints. The colors I got for today are Insignia White, IJA Light Gray, USAF Green, USAF Olive Drab, Khaki, Tan, and my personal favorite, German Gray. Just like the regular splash colors, the military line works best in two to three medium coats at 18 to 22 PSI. Now, unlike other paints, we're not going to actually do a glossy wet final coat, but because of this, we're actually saving paint in the long run. As I started painting, I realized that most colors were able to cover three spoons in about a milliliter or less, the only exception being the Insignia White, needing about one and a half milliliters, which is pretty standard for white paints across the board. Looking at all the colors side by side, you can see that some colors are affected more by the white, gray, or black primer. So if you decide to pick up some of these paints, test them out on some spoons before you get started so you can get the desired effect that you're looking for. What about a color comparison? For today's comparison, I'm going to be using Gaia's military line and i'll be comparing the paints both over gray primer as it's more of a neutral middle ground between the white or the black let's start with the usaf green from splash the color comparison i'm going to be making is with gaia's military on Kushoku, which translates roughly to a dark green side by side you can see that the splash paints are more vibrant than the gaia colors and this is going to hold true for the olive drab as well as the german gray as i wrapped up recording i remembered that i had an olive drab helmet that i used from an airsoft loadout a while back when we compare the spoons we can see that the gaia is a lot more accurate than splash. Even when we use the splash paint over the black primer, we could see that the olive drab from Gaia has a little bit of that warmer brown tone, making it much closer to the actual color of the helmet. Now, a lot of people may think that this is a negative, but I personally think that this is a positive, and here's why. To explain that, let's get into the kit for today, which is going to be an X Wing kit from the Rise of Skywalker. For the white sections, I went ahead and decided to use the Insignia White, and for the green sections, I went with the USAF Olive Drab. Now, while these colors are more vibrant than their Gaia counterparts, we have to remember that these are going to be military paint so they're gonna need to be weathered up a little bit to start i covered the entire kit with a multi-black wash and then cleaned it up with a little bit of enamel thinner and this is where i think splash's vibrance works really well because the colors are more vibrant to start as we wash them down they still dull a little bit but not too much that they get muddied up compare that to the gaia colors when we start to wash those they only get darker and darker as more weathering is applied after cleaning up the wash and adding a little bit of soot and grime let's go ahead and take a look at that final product Splash has slowly been taking up more space on my shelf, and for good reason too. Their amazing coverage coupled with their readily available supply being a US-based company means that I can use colors as much as I want and not have to worry about saving some until the next shipment crosses the ocean and then clears customs. If you've ever had to save paint because you were worried about the next time you were going to get some, go ahead and give Splash a shot and I promise you won't be disappointed. So there you guys have it, my review of the Splash Military line. If there's any questions that I missed or any questions you have from here on out, drop those in the comments below and I'll be more than happy to answer them. Don't forget, you can pick up your Splash Military colors from MidwestHobbyandCraft.com and they'll get it shipped out to you fast so you can get started on your next Gundam or military vehicle. With that said, guys, thank you so much for joining me today. Hope you found some value in this video and remember, take care of yourselves, take care of each other, and I'll see you in the next one.